Hi, it's Matt here from Pilot Practice Exams. Let's take a look at the 1 in 60 rule. So the 1 in 60 rule is a rule that is going to let you get back on track after you've flown off track. So as the wind pushes us off track because it's different to what we estimate in flight, then this gives us a quick, easy way to work out based on how far we are off our, our flight plan track, which is this FPT, and at a certain interval, and we can calculate uh, using a rule of thumb to get back on track and then to turn back onto our flight plan to track. Now this is super important in the CNAV exam. Uh, it's also super important in your PPL and it's super important in your RPL and RAOS navigation or your RPL navigation exam. So let's dive in and take a look. So when they give you the question, they're going to have to give you a certain amount of information first up. They're going to need to tell you how far you have flown, what your original flight plan to track was. They're going to tell you when you get to a certain point how far off track you are. Now the other thing that they're going to give you or you're going to know if you're actually flying it is your heading. So in this case we're going to say that we, were, we wanted a flight plan track of 165. We had a heading, which you remember is not the track, that's the track there. The track is the path that the flight, the aircraft flies. The heading is where the aircraft is pointing. So we were pointing 161. We don't know this yet, just ignore that, okay? But, okay, so what we want to know is they're going to ask us, okay, so you've flown 40 nautical miles, you were heading 161, and at the 40 nautical mile point, you were six nautical miles to the left of track. So now we need to use the one in 60 rule. And the one in 60 rule works like this. Every 60 nautical miles we travel along our flight plan track, for every one nautical mile that we are off our track, that is one degrees back here where we've traveled off. So if we got to say, let's say we got out here to the 60 nautical mile mark, and we were six nautical miles off track there, then we're at 60, so one in 60 would be six. That means that for every one nautical mile we're off track, that is one degrees we're off track. So we are six nautical miles off track at the six, 60 nautical mile mark from here. So we would be six degrees off track. Our track error is six degrees. So let me just bring that back there for a sec. And let's dive in and take a look. So we need to draw this up to keep track of uh, when we get a question that's written in words, we need to draw it up as a triangle like this so that we can keep track. So we draw our 60 nautical mile mark there, our six nautical miles off track there. And then we know that for every one nautical mile we're off track at 60 nautical miles, that is one degree. So therefore the track error is six degrees. Now, it just again, ignore that for the moment. So now let's go back to our original question. If we had flown 40 nautical miles and after 40 nautical miles, we're six nautical miles off track, then we know that's going to be more than six degrees. So how much is it? Well, for every 60 nautical miles, it's one in six. So we're two thirds of the way to 60 miles. So in other words, six over two thirds or six times three over two, which is one and a half, is going to be our track error. So that's just basic math, six over two thirds or six um, times three over two. Because 60, and remember our rule is one in 60. Well, here we've flown two thirds of the 60. So that is two thirds of what it's going to be when we get to the 60 nautical mile mark. And if that's two thirds, then if we divide that into thirds, so in, in the, you know, parts of three, um, then two of them, the, the, the two parts are going to be three each, and we add another one, that's going to be nine nautical miles. In other words, when we get out here to say there, somewhere at 60 nautical miles from back here, that's going to be nine nautical miles off track. But they're asking us, they're telling us that we realise this at the 40 nautical mile mark. So it's really going to be, that's two thirds, so three thirds will be nine. So the track error in this particular case is going to be nine degrees. So now this is where this comes in. So if we were uh, heading 161 
and our flight pan track was 165 and our track error is 9 degrees then 165 minus 9 in other words we've gone 9 degrees to the left so 9 degrees less than that is going to equal 156 degrees so in other words we've been we were meant to be heading that way we were the plane was sorry we we're meant to be tracking that way the plane was heading 161 or pointing at 161 but the plane was actually flying along this path towards 156 and it ended up out here so the reason these two numbers now become so important is, is if the plane was heading at 161 but it actually flew out here to the left of that at 156 and that means we're experiencing five degrees of drift to the left now we know that we've been experiencing nine degrees track error in other words we've been getting pushed to the left by nine degrees so if we correct by nine degrees to the right what we'll end up doing is tracking parallel to our flight plans track so that's how we make sure that we're back on our flight plan tr track or parallel to our flight train track but how do we make sure that we come down here and intersect our flight plan track so what we need to do is turn nine degrees to the right to correct that track error but then we also want to use a calculation for this six nautical miles off track that we are and we want to be back on track in 60 nautical miles now you can make that any difference any number you want and use the one in 60 rule just like we did over here but in this particular case the question asks for us to be back on track in 60 nautical miles so again using the one in 60 for every one nautical mile we're off track it's one degrees in 60 nautical miles so in this case we're six nautical miles off track and if we want to be back on track in 60 nautical miles then that is six degrees so we'd need to turn we've already turned right so that that will turn us uh track us parallel to our flight plan track we've turned right nine degrees so we need to add six to that to be back on to intersect our track here so again we've flown off track here we've worked out that we're nine degrees off track so if we turn nine degrees right then we're going to fly parallel and that's not going to fix our problem so we've got to work out how far do we want to be back till we want to be back on track and then we use the one in 60. so for every 60 nautical miles one nautical mile off track is one degrees so six nautical miles off track will be six degrees so that'll have us back on track if we turn turn right another six degrees so in total that's a 15 degree right turn so we were heading 161 we need to turn 15 degrees to the right from uh, past 161 so that would be a further around so to be 161 plus 15 would be 176 so that 176 isn't the uh, track the track will be different the 176 is where the plane actually needs to head because it was heading 161 and we add 15 to that it's going to be heading 176 so now that we've got our angle our heading that we're going to fly our new angle that we're going to fly 176 if we fly 176 we're eventually going to fly straight across our flight plan track so we need to know when to turn left to get back onto that now that would be a simple calculation of working out your airspeed and how long in time it takes to travel along that 60 nautical mile so if you were doing uh, for example 60 knots that would take you one hour if you were doing 120 knots that would take you half an hour if you're doing somewhere in between then you get out your flight computer and you calculate it so that you knew at what point in time you need to turn left there and then how far left you turn well we want to track 165 and we know we've got five degrees worth of uh, drift to the left so we need to point the aircraft five degrees uh, to the right of that flight plan track which means the aircraft would now be flying at 170 when we reach that point we would turn to the left and fly 170 and when you're reading this in some of the textbooks you're not going to see that position there what you're going to see is this here uh, position there and that's called the correction angle but if you remember back to your high school maths if you've got two parallel lines 
and the line intersects both, then that angle there will equal that angle there. So a lot of the times in the textbooks, you won't see that line on there and you won't see that there. You'll see it drawn up and that won't be there either. You'll see it drawn up like that. Okay, but it means the exact same thing. I just like to draw it up like this because putting that extra step into it uh, allows me not to make a mistake. So you just need to do what works for you there. Okay, so now I just want to take another look at a slightly different scenario and see if you actually understand this. So we previously that had 60 nautical miles there. What about though if we only had 30 nautical miles and we wanted to get back on track? So the 1 in 60 rule states that, you know, for every 1 nautical mile we're off track, in 60 nautical miles, that's 1 degrees. So in 30 nautical miles, it must be double that, because 30 goes into 60 twice. So the angle is going to be twice as much or twice as steep to get us back on track. So 30 goes into 62 and 6 nautical miles off track, so therefore it's going to be 2 times that. So the correction angle there is going to be 12 degrees instead of 6 degrees, and it's going to be the same there. Therefore, you're going to have to turn right 9 degrees plus 12, which is going to be 21 degrees. So 161 plus 21 is going to become 182 degrees is going to be our new uh, heading that the aircraft is going to have to fly. And then again, you'd use your uh, flight computer to calculate in 30 nautical miles, how long is that going to take me based on my flight speed. So now what if we change that to 40 nautical miles? Well, 40 goes into 60 one and a half times. So one and a half times six is nine. So our correction angle there would become nine degrees. I become 9, we've got to turn 9 degrees plus 9 equals 18. So 161 plus 18 equals 100 and what's that? Uh, 170, 179 degrees. And then you would use your, again, your, your flight computer to calculate from your ground speed how long that's going to take. You'd fly that interval and then you would turn left. Now we're still experiencing five degrees of drift that hasn't changed so you would turn left and you would head on to 170. So thanks for watching I'm Matt from Pilot Practice Exams make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any updates on videos like this give us a thumbs up if you like this it's the only way we know that you like stuff and don't forget you can head on over to pilotpracticeexams.com where you can practice all of your uh, CASA exams for the Australian Pilot's License and the RAOS ones as well.